adding frames to your portrait images can really enhance the way you're going to share them. Now, in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create your frame, how to add a shadow and how to insert your own image before you're going to share them with the rest of the world. So if you're ready for today's fun and creative tutorial, we are starting right now. And once again, moving into Luminar Neo, where we starting in a catalog module, looking at our sample files. So first we have the frame. Now, this is a simple frame I have got from one of the royalty free websites. And as you can see, it's quite nice. It connects nicely with the romantic season, but it could be any kind of frame. Now it looks nice. All we need to do is to remove the inside. So we will do that later. After that, what we have is the image of the couple we will use to add inside of the frame and also shadow layer. <laughs> Don't worry, it will be super easy. Anyway, so we have our frame ready. By the way, if you want to follow me along and do the edit on your own computer, you know what to do. Jump into the description of this video, follow the link there and join me well, on your own computer. What you need to do is simply open the frame image in Luminar Neo and we can start. By the way, a quick reminder, if you want to skip the part where you have to remove the inside and add the shadow, if you just want to apply your own images and export them, then check out our latest romance bundle, which comes with a number of great frames, which are already ready for the editing and it will really speed up your process. To find out more about it, head to our website at cleverphotographer.com or simply follow the link in the description of this video. So that out of the way, today we will learn how to do it ourselves. So frame ready, so we move it into the edit module. In edit module, as I mentioned, first thing we need to do is to remove the inside. Now there are different techniques we can do this, but all of them will include masking. So image selected into our main editing toolbar, where we're going to click on layer properties. In layer properties, we have properties and masking. So we will go into the masking and here out of the traditional techniques, we can use the brush or we can use the more advanced object select AI. So for the brush, let me show you how it's done. Well, we're going to click on the brush tool. We're going to click on erase as we're going to be erasing part of the frame. We're going to adjust our softness to let's say around 10 or 15. Let's go for 15 strength, definitely on 100 and a size. Well, we're going to keep adjusting it as we go very quickly. We're going to zoom in uh, as far as you need. And once happy, adjust the size again. You can use the uh, slider or you can use the bracket keys and just make one tap or one click. After that, hold the shift and make another tap a little bit later. So somewhere around here. So sh shift on your keyboard and click. And just like that, the application creates the line between the two clicks. So we will continue like this quite quickly. Just keep removing the parts of the frame. After that, once we get to the corner again, hold the shift and remove this part. Oh, that was a mistake. We can use command or control Z to undo it. And basically holding a shift and removing the parts of the photo. So like this, like this, like this all the way and from here, somewhere around here and all the way up. So quite quick adjustment. Then we can make our brush a little bit bigger and do the same, just a little bit faster and then even bigger and really go ahead and remove it very quickly to make sure that we end up with the empty space in the middle. So as you can see, I keep using the shift and I keep using bracket keys, adjusting the size of my brush. And really, in theory, it shouldn't take more than a few minutes. Now you can take extra time to make sure that it's done properly and everything looks good. But as a guidance on how it's done, I think this is good. So that's the first technique. Well, now let's close the layer properties, right click on the image into adjustments and revert to original. And we're going to use the second little bit more advanced technique again in layer properties and masking but this time into object select AI. So let's click on that and give it a moment so it can scan the image. Once ready, we can actually select the inside. Now you can say add or subtract. We're going to go for the subtract. So let's select that. 
and let's remove the inside just like that. Once we do that, we can come back and the inside is gone. Quite fast, right? So that was much faster than the brush. Anyway, sometimes the selection isn't perfect. So what you're going to do, you can then go in with the brush, adjust the size, adjust the softness. So into the 15, make it a little bit smaller, this time into paint as we're going to be bringing part of the frame back. And we're just going to go here, one click, second click, third click. So that's a part of the frame back. You can do the same on this side. And probably we're going to finish it off everywhere just to make sure. Something like this. If you make a mistake, again, use Command or Control Z and just undo the steps and just double check that it looks the way you need. But I think for now, this is good enough. So close the layer properties. And the next step is to add the image of our couple. So how to do that? Into Layers panel, click on the plus sign. And I already have it here. However, what you would do is you would click on load image, then navigate into the layer properties, select the image with a couple and click on open. Once you do that, do the same for the shadow layer. So you should have the same view as me, couple and the shadow layer. Let's add the couple first. You're going to select that. Once we import it, it's quite good practice to go into layer properties and click on fit to make sure that you don't have any distortion on the image. And now once selected, you can use the little white points to adjust its size. So let's do that. I think probably somewhere around here, you can then drag it into the correct position. And when happy, what we can do, we can, let's have a look somewhere around here. We can go into layer properties and increase the opacity all the way to 100. Looks good, no? <laughs> no, no, it doesn't because right now, the layer with the couple is actually above the frame. So they are not inside. So what we need to do, really simple, into layers panel, take the image of the couple and drag and drop it under, which looks good. I'm really happy with it. Now, if you need now, you can still go into the frame and adjust its mask. So for example, here you can see it goes a little bit over his hair. So what we would do, we would go into the masking, brush, erase, softness down to, yeah, again, 15, and just very carefully adjust this area to make sure that it looks a little bit better. If you need to adjust it the other way around, hit X or go into the pane and just adjust that little detail there. So that looks much better. Okay, so we have took our frame, removed the inside, added our couple, and now it's time to add one more step and that's to create a shadow. Look at the image. There's a shadow or there's a light coming from this direction and it creates shadows under the hearts as well as the ribbon and the frame. So we're going to copy the same direction of the shadow. So looking at it, it's right here heading towards this direction. So we will add shadow here and here. And to do this, we're going to do it very traditional way. We're going to click on plus sign, bringing our dark layer or shadow layer. Once it appears, back to layer properties and on fit. And once it's there, increase the opacity to 100. Now the shadow should be inside of the frame and above our couple image. So just take it and bring it down. However, <laughs> look at it. It looks like, well, it's very dark in a way. We can't see the couple. So we need to adjust this. So into the masking, in a masking, into mask actions, fill and invert. So it's gone. So it's only going to appear where we're going to brush. Zoom in a little closer into the brush. We're going to paint it in. We're going to paint the part of the layer in. Size is probably quite good. Definitely softness on 100 and strength on 100. Now inside your brush are two circles, the outer circle and the inside circle or inner. The inner circle is where the brush will brush with 100%. The outer circle is the softness. So we want the inner circle to be just slightly above the edge of the frame. So somewhere around here. Once happy, make one click. And then hold the shift and make the same click on the other side, somewhere here. So we have one part of the shadow created. Now we're going to add it also here. So again, a little bit outside of the or of the edge. So one click or one tap and then hold shift. And let's do the same on the other side. Perfect. Now it looks okay, right? It doesn't look great, but 
we almost there. It's just a little bit too dark. Well, to adjust this, it's really simple into the properties. And here we're going to adjust the opacity. So bring it down until you're happy with the result. If you want to have it very small, you can bring it down for me on this image. Looking at the other shadows, I'm thinking around 40. Once happy, close the layer properties. And that's the part of the heavy lifting done. Now, all we have left to do is to just apply a few global adjustments to blend everything together. And to do this, we need to merge the layers. The easiest way to do this, well, right click on the image, click on export, and again, navigate towards the location where you want to export it. I have already created one earlier, but again, I like to call this mid edit. So in my case, I'm going to call it mid edit two. And then also we need to adjust the exporting settings. Sharpening on none, we don't want to add any extra sharpening. Resize to original, color space to sRGB. Format, so the highest possible, we're going for TIFF. Resolution on 300 pixels on inch. LZW compression is a good choice, or you can go for none. Depth on 16 bits. And don't forget to uncheck the save transparency. Once happy, click on save, and that will export the image. It only takes a few seconds, so once ready, we can go into the catalog menu or catalog module, and here we can select our image. With the image selected, bring it back to the edit module. We're now looking into the layers. You can see that it's just the one layer. So what we can do to make it a little more realistic? Well, let's go into the editing toolbar. In Essentials, we can apply a little vignette. So just take the amount slider and bring it down. Let's say to around minus 60. Add a touch of inner light to maybe add extra attention towards our couple. And then into the creative section, one thing I like to add for this type of images is a little film grain for a little cinematic feel. So let's go to 15. Then maybe touch of the mystical glow is also a good idea. And to finish it off, little LUT or LUT in a mood tool also goes a long way. So click on choose LUT dropdown box into the cinematic toning to use LUT that is already part of the application. Then let's just see what works for you. Now you can choose whatever you like. I'm going to go for the long beach. And once finished, close it. And we can have a look at the before and after from the mid edit. Now, I, I know that the adjustment looks quite subtle, but that's what we're looking for. Subtle adjustment, which will make it more real realistic and more blended together. So this is our result. This is what you do. Remove the middle, add a shadow, add your couple, add a little bit of global adjustments and export it and share it with your loved ones. One more reminder, if you do want to speed up the process and you want to grab a few frames for the upcoming romantic season, definitely check out our romance bundle. Again, by heading to our website, cleverphotographer.com or following the link in the description of this video. And of course, if you want to continue learning, check out our romance editing playlist with similar tutorial to this one, or even better, our YouTube channel, Clever Photographer, has a video for every single tool in this application. So if you get stuck, or if you want to enhance your editing skills in this super cool program, then definitely head to our YouTube channel and continue learning now.